Man, I really want to grab some boobs. It's not it's not what you're thinking. It's not what you're thinking. They're all crazy as fuck. Oh! Okay. So talking about JoJo. I just happened to find it. I want to see just guns out of, like, everywhere and stuff like that. Like, what, 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 what? I can't wait for that. I like crazy girls, yeah. I tried to find the most perverted shit I could. I, I think we need to stop here. All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. Uh, I'm your host CJ. Here with me is Dan. Say hi, Dan. What up, guys? I'm here. All right, we also have Roberto. Hola. And Klecker. How's it going? All right, cool. So, for anyone who doesn't know what this podcast is, a uh, little quick thing: what it is, it's uh, essentially works like a book club where we recommend anime and manga to each other. And we watch and or read it and discuss it. And we just break it up into blocks so it's more manageable throughout the week. And, um, yeah, like one big important thing is, uh, as always, there is a huge spoiler warning. The main thing that we're going to be talking about today is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, episodes 10 through 18. Yeah, 10 through 18. And it's going to be heavily spoiled You like about everything that happens there, as well as any other shows. Because... Like, we usually try to, um, say if we're going to spoil a show, talk about things that have happened. We almost always talk about the Monogatari series, and um, but sometimes we forget, so there, there may be some other things that are spoiled for you. Alright, so today's agenda, what we're going over is um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, episodes 10 through 18 first, then after that we'll go on to any other anime or manga we've been watching or reading throughout the week, and then after that we have our random topic of the day, which today is... What anime or manga had you hooked by one episode or chapter? Like, just fucking grabbed you and you're just like, I need more of this in my life. Alright, cool. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much the agenda. And we'll go ahead and start with JoJo's. And I always forget who recommended this one. Me. Alright, go ahead and give it a little quick description for anybody who doesn't know. Which, I mean, they probably do by now because it's fucking all over the place. Yeah, you could probably do a quick recap of the, the last few episodes as well, maybe. So, yeah, but a quick description first. All right. So the quick description is you're following this family, the, a family lineage, a.k.a. the Jojo lineage. And the Jojo lineage has a lot of fate tied behind it. And you're following the Jojo's lineage throughout the history. And ho- like crazy stuff just happens and you're just along for the ride. So that's just a brief little description of it. Well, yeah, that and it's... um. Like tied into the fate thing a little bit. There's a there's a lot of big struggles of good versus evil type of stuff, and yeah, people just being sucked into it whether they want to or not, which being the fate part of it and stuff. Correct. Then you want to do the uh, quick recap, or you want me to? You can do the recap. All right. Well, quick recap is just um, last time it was episodes one through nine, which actually is um, takes place much before this part because it was the first part, and. Um, I forget the year it takes place in, because these, these are generational, so it'll be like one or two generations of the family that till the next part and such. But uh, with the last one, it was the first one where the JoJo's encountered the mask, I believe. I could be wrong. As far as we know, it's the first one where they've encountered the mask, which this mask is something that allows people, if they put it on and like have blood touched to it, they turn into a vampire. And it gives them all these crazy powers, more than what even a typical vampire has, and... They end up fighting, like, people with this, and I, I don't know. That's kind of like a description of all the arcs from what I've seen so far, but, uh... Yeah, yeah it, it does it, apply to most of it, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess the biggest point is that the guy dies, right? And then now oh, we yeah. start following the story of his grandson. Yeah, it's his grandson, and his, um... His mom, or grandma, is still alive, so that's actually... You you see his grandma's the one who raised him and stuff, and then we start off there where he's he he comes to New York to meet uh, Speedwagon because Speedwagon's amazing. <laughs> so Actually, the yes. second the second arc takes place about probably I'd say forty or fifty years after the first kind it's of arc. Years. It's fifty yeah. years. That's what I thought. Yeah. Because the grandma's old, Speedwagon's old, but Speedwagon's still awesome, representing everything <laughs> yeah i i was re- actually really happy in the beginning of this arc when we got to see those characters back again 
because for for a moment I had the impression that all the ties to the original story would kind of be cut off, but thankfully no, there was Speedwagon over there, and he got even more awesome. Oh, yeah, like, like one thing that was funny, I didn't know at all who who Speedwagon was at first. I was like, "Fuck this guy!" So yeah. I said his name. I was like, "Oh yes, I remember you. <laughs> I loved you." And because uh, yeah, Speedwagon was actually my my favorite character of the first arc. And it's nice to see him back. Like, the reason I liked him so much, which I think I talked about last episode, was even though he, he kind of couldn't do much and he was almost like a, a... He wasn't a bitch or anything like that. He he had, like, the will and the strength. Or not the strength. He had the will and everything to fight, but he was just terrible and he couldn't do anything. He was weak. So it was, like, great. Like, he, yeah, he was he, a good character. He tried to help out, but he didn't really have any powers. And that trend continued throughout this next part of the show where... Well, he had the best superpower, which is money. So oh yes, that was that great. was something interesting. <laughs> he was able to help out a little bit because of that, but it was good to just meet the new JoJo yeah. as well, Joseph yeah. Joe Star. Yeah, I Joseph's weird. I I don't know if I like Joseph yet because I mean, he he has he has a very different personality than Jonathan. Yeah. Where Jonathan, ah. he was just always wanted to be, where it's just like, I'm a fucking gentleman. I'm going to do everything because it's the right thing to do. And right. Interesting. Joseph, it feels like deep inside he does have that wheel of being a gentleman because he wants to like do everything for his grandmother and everything. And like he respects his family or whatever. But at the same time, like he is very, he's very known gentleman. Like he's almost the opposite uh, from Jonathan in a way because he's very violent. He never, like, I don't think he ever, like, apologizes for anything. He runs away all the time. I don't know. The running away, that's actually a point I was going to make. That's a little bit different because the thing that's great about that is whenever that happens, it's it's, it's great because he, when you're even talking to, like, uh, the first time he met Smokey and everything and ended up having um, the fucking old monk dude attack him and stuff, he, he tells him what his last uh, his last plan is. And his last plan is always to just run away. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, he doesn't really do it because he wants to just get out of there and save himself. It's actually much more of a self-sacrifice thing, which I found very interesting because the reason he ran away was so that way he could lure the the monk dude out of there so he wouldn't hurt anybody, he wouldn't cause any more property damage or anything. He wanted to get him to a place where it was just him and um, Joseph. Right. Which I think... Joseph, I think Joseph is a lot more clever, I feel like. Oh, he's he's a smart motherfucker. He's Which is why I love him. Yes. One thing one thing I do love about him is it seems like he um I guess to put it in like I guess one thing you guys might understand is put it in like D&D terms is he seems like he has like I don't know. I I'd, I'd probably say like I don't know if it's wisdom or intelligence, but he has like 30 in one of them and like 6 in the other. <laughs> and I think it's he has like he has like twenty or thirty wisdom, but like six intelligence. So he's not really smart, but oh my god, he can figure out what the fuck people are gonna do and think and all that, and just know what's gonna happen with him. Like it's it's ridiculous, right? Because he, um, which I think you see it the most with. Uh, or actually, we should probably go over a little bit what's actually happening in this arc right now. Good idea. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh. So what happens, just a quick uh, rundown of everything that happens here for this arc, is uh, we meet the we meet the new Jojo, which is Joseph, and then um, shortly after that, you end up running into one of the people from the last arc, which was one of the monks, which I forgot his name. Do you, any Straits. Other? Straits. Straits, yeah. And he ends up actually being like consumed by this want to be young, actually ends up um, when they find this this big pillar thing that has like a guy in it that looks like a statue, but I think it's yeah, it's actually a guy, and um, all these masks like from the previous arc, where they're the ones that turn people into vampires and everything, and he gets consumed by like his want to stay young so much to the point where he actually attacks all of his all of his comrades there with him, including uh, speedwagon, yeah, speedwagon, speed just fucking whacks him in the side of the head and shit, he's bleeding like hell, and then um. He turns himself into one of the vampires. And then we go from there. We see Jojo fight him and everything. And um, Also, that fight next? scene against Straits was pretty cool. Because, yeah. like, I, I think he... Like, Straits comes up, comes up to attack him or something. But before he even does anything, Jojo picks up this big, like, automatic 
uh, shit, what's the name? Oh, the Tom- Tommy gun. Tommy gun? Yeah, yeah. And just, like, starts shooting him yes. like a million bullets. And everybody just starts running away thinking JoJo is a crazy murderer or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that was that was pretty amazing. That made me happy. And, um, yeah, they end up going at it and everything and fighting. And how, I forgot, how did JoJo kill him? On the he, bridge. Like, he killed himself, didn't he? Yeah, they were. I think they were by the bridge, and then he got a like he kidnapped a girl or something. And Jojo pretends that he doesn't care about it, but when he sees that the guy's actually gonna hurt the girl, he goes there to help her. Uh, so as soon as I think as soon as he goes, that he gets there, they battle, and eventually he doesn't. The sun come up and like no, no, no. What actually happened? No. I remember now is uh, Straits actually because he was a fir- he was a big user of the Hamon and everything, which is what the the people who train with it and everything used to actually kill the vampires which is funny because he he's a vampire now and all that he actually uses that inside himself to essentially kill himself with it right i think i yeah. think that's what happens okay yeah and um yeah Before the, doing that though he does tell jojo about the the pillar man and everything right yeah that's why he goes after him yeah so then shortly after that um jojo actually goes and starts searching for the pillar man and everything which i think was he was he searching for um, he was looking for speedwagon because he had gone missing in mexico oh yeah that's and he was actually was. believed that by that point mm-hmm. yeah yeah so he's going looking for speedwagon and he ends up actually coming up on this uh this german base which actually has uh both speedwagon and the pillar man in it and um i was actually talking about this with one of the people i work with uh uh, the other day, and apparently this is like where you see what like apparently this is something that's super famous on the internet, which is uh, Tequila Joseph, and right. it's where he's he's dressed up like trying to look like a woman, but it's obvious with his like six foot wide shoulders that he's definitely oh, God, not a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was disturbing. <laughs> yes, and, uh, yes, it is. Those Nazis wanted none of that. Yeah, and then um. Then yeah, they go in, and this is then uh, you actually first see the uh, yeah you see the first Pillar Man, which okay. is uh, oh yeah you see Von Stroheim as well too because he's just fucking he's the commanding officer of that base. Yeah, he's he's a pretty badass Nazi, which it's <laughs> it, it's it's hard saying that. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can say that. Uh, you yeah. you can probably get arrested now, CJ. <laughs> well, he's 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 a good character. I'll put it that right. way. He's okay. also the cousin of Guile. You do know that the FBI yeah. is listening to this, right? <laughs> Dude, you, you, you assume that the FBI is listening to it? Like, nobody's listening to this. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? If anything happens, you can always run away to Brazil. Well, then, if, if we actually do get the FBI to listen, we'll have, like, double or triple our listener count, probably. So it'll yep. probably look like it's good for us. <laughs> sure. But, That's um... Something. Yeah, because uh, what ends up happening after that, though, is uh, Stroheim and his men actually end up waking up the first Pillar Man, which is uh, Santana? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's yeah. what they name him. Yeah. He's he's like the vampires, but he eats other vampires by consuming them, like, just through his body. He just, like, eats people with his chest or legs or whatever. <laughs> like, it's it's weird. <laughs> yep. And he can, like, know. twist his body in all those crazy ways, and he can yeah. even, like, get inside other bodies as well and explode them and do all this sorts of crazy shit. Yeah. So, by that point, he was basically, like, the strongest dude we had ever seen on the show. Maybe. But, yeah. We later found out that it wasn't the case, but... Well, yeah, we have the other three Pillar Men pop up later. But, um... Yep. Yeah, what ends up happening here is... Uh, the fuck happened exactly oh yeah jojo does all this stupid shit <laughs> like fucking with him like crazy the the santana and everything trying to get him to acknowledge him pretty much so he can he can talk to him and stuff because he's in there and he's he's trying to get stro or not Stroheim, uh speed wagon out and then he ends up actually doing something to piss off santana and they start fighting like do you guys remember what it was, it was something stupid yeah I, I don't actually remember the details i don't remember they had like a pretty awesome fight that ultimately ended up with von Stroheim. Killing himself to to save everybody because like uh, Jojo has to cut his leg or something because he's trying to reach to open the door that it would have let like the sunlight go in or whatever because Santana is still uh, like, he's still from that same race of dudes that is killed by the by the sunlight like not like the other vampires but he dies in the same way and stuff so ultimately that's what they want to do to kill this brute motherfucker and mm-hmm. I th- but 
right at the last moment when when they're about to get it done, he actually gets inside Von Stroheim's body, who is the the Nazi commander or whatever. That was so uh, weird. Yes. And then he decides to blow himself up to kill Santana with him. Dude, it's like this is this is why I like Strahim. Strahim's got some fucking balls where he's just like, yep. he's trying to get to the door and everything, and he can't because uh, Santana grabs onto him with his weird like tentacle body thing or whatever. Grabs onto his legs, so he can't go any farther. Else, by like rooting himself onto the steps, and um, he ends up just telling Jojo, he's like, Jojo, grab that axe and cut off my leg so I can open the door." Yep, <laughs> and it's just I like, didn't holy see shit, that coming. <laughs> like, dude's fucking crazy. Yeah. And then after that, once he does get outside and everything, and then um, Santana goes inside him, he's just like. Well, I guess I gotta kill him somehow. Time to just take this grenade and just, you know, just yep. just cuddle it until it explodes here. Yeah. At, at that episode, that character gained some respect for my part, because up until then, I actually thought he was just gonna be, like, a stupid side character that would do nothing but to just, like, wake up. Like, I thought his point in the series was just to wake up Santana, and then he would die, and Santana would be the next, like, big villain or whatever. But nope, the dude actually had some pretty big balls and killed himself in order to kill Santana with him. Or so we thought. But Well, Santana actually got out and then he died by the sun. Oh, oh yeah, he jumps well. into yeah, the Santana well. Santana <laughs> hid in a well for a bit and then I think there was some sort of mirror action where they reflected a mirror into the sunlight into the well and then it literally turned Santana into a stone. No, actually. What oh. actually happened is uh, he jumped. He tried to jump into the well but Jojo jumped in the way. And he actually just, like, stuck himself on the wall so he couldn't go down any farther into the water. And because it was high noon, the sun went straight down into the well and reflected straight up off of the surface, too. And just oh, fucking yeah. there we go. That's what it him. was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I don't know, maybe different in the manga or whatever. If you've been reading that, I have no idea. But that's the way it was in the, the anime. It's, uh, it's a pretty good adaptation from what I've seen. So yeah, it's... that's that's right. I I knew it was some sort of, of reflection. It was just the reflection of the water in the well. Yeah. I just want to take away from the story... Just for a second to say that the new opening was also really cool. Like, all the psychedelic colors and everything, just, like, seeing the dudes fight. Like, just the outlines of the dudes fighting in pink and green and yellow. Uh, just great music as well. I, th I thought it was pretty good opening. Like, we, we talked about the the one on the original arc. I think I might mm -hmm. have liked this one even better. It oh, yeah, just like, gets better. Yeah, I definitely like the opening for this one better. I still love how they have the same uh, the same closing song, though. Like, that song right, yeah. makes me want to learn bass. I've, <laughs> I've thought about it before, and it wouldn't be too hard, and I want to learn bass now because of that. Just to fucking play that beginning of it. Oh, right. so good. Yeah, that song, yeah, that Andy song was actually pretty cool as well. I like that. Yeah. All right, so what happens after that? Did, did anything meet, else? They go to, they find the other three pillar men in Italy, I think. Yeah, oh, they, they meet Caesar first, though, right? Yeah, they meet, they meet, he goes to Europe. So yeah, actually, they, that was an interesting part of this part of the story as well. The way, like, because on the first one, the first JoJo only stayed in England, I believe, but this one actually traveled the world, right? Because he starts in America, and then he goes to Germany, and then to at one point he goes to London, Italy. He was just going everywhere. I think it's. Yeah, I think at one point, like, he's in Switzerland as well, or something. No, I, I think they they stick to Italy. Mainly. No, they go to Germany because they go to Italy, and then I think the the I for, I, I forgot what they're called, but pretty much the mask guys the go man. to I think they go to Germany or something. I have no idea. I didn't pay attention to anywhere they went. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was just a nice European road trip. Yeah. Um, back to the story, though. He made Caesar. Yeah, was... Caesar Zeppeli, which is important. Yep. Because yep. Zeppeli is a guy who sacrificed himself for the last JoJo, and um, so that, that kind of sets some stuff up. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming like because there's a lot of major points like that in the last arc with like everybody's like sacrificed himself for this, they die or whatever. Like, like one thing I'm really um assuming is um that it's gonna play out something similar where like Caesar is gonna end up like sacrificing himself somehow, and Joseph's gonna die. And, like, everything like that. I'm assuming, like, everything's going to play out the way it did in the last one, just with, like, a different thing, because... Right, like, I, I, can, I can kind of see where you're coming from. That does actually make, make some sense, yeah. The I series mean, is based off of fate, so... Yeah, that's that's the main reason, is it? Because of the, the fate thing and everything. It seems like it's going to essentially be playing the same story over and over, where you have to fight against the vampire dudes. This dude dies, this dude survives this dude dies somehow right. or whatever. Like, I, it seems like it's going to keep playing out the same way. 
Sure. I can see an ending where Joseph dies as well, just like Jonathan ends up like leaving like someone or like as like I don't know, like a son or whatever as well that can continue the tradition, you know, like on the next generation yeah. or whatever. Well, the only thing that's weird, though, because, like, up to where we're at, I think the last thing we saw, just so everyone knows where we're at who, like, doesn't know the exact uh, uh, episodes themselves, we just saw uh, Stroheim for the second time and just realized he's alive, like, right before the credits roll. So, one right. thing that's weird is, I don't know at this point how the hell JoJo's going to actually have lineage go on farther if he's about to do all this battling and shit and probably die, it's like, what did, did he bang Suzy Q already or what? Oh, Suzy Q. Like, I'm glad you remember that name. I actually, <laughs> I actually really like that character. I, I hope, I hope she comes back at one point. Although like, I, I don't really have high hopes for it because she kind of just showed up for like an episode or whatever. I feel like she only served so that ACDC would like get in her body and they would do that like, like weird fight or whatever. But yeah. she was she was a cute char- character. I liked her. She she was she was too moe for me. <laughs> like, well, I guess it, it's. I mean, I mean that as far as like personality goes, because she's like the super ditzy character and all that, and right. bubbly and everything. And I I don't like those types of characters anymore. Cool. Anymore? What happened? So I, I dated a girl that was like <laughs> that. Oh. Yeah. It was. I I can't stand that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It's, Fair it's enough. too much. But, um, so, we've missed someone. We've talked about Suzy Q, but we haven't talked about the oh, trainer. Oh, yes. Lisa Lisa. Yes. Because they end up going through several episodes where it's, uh, or maybe it's just like one or two, but it seemed like a lot. Like, that's one thing I love about this series. It seems super long whenever it's like an episode, like all this stuff happens, because yeah. there's no bullshit filler. But, um... Yeah, Lisa Lisa ends up trading like the hell out of Caesar and um and Jojo to try to get them in fighting shape to fight the three pillar men which were awoken by She's someone. a pretty extreme sensei, I'll say that. She doesn't bullshit around. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like she she seems like she'll legitimately let someone die if they don't fucking figure it out. <laughs> yep. Like, that that looked pretty clear by the first challenge. It's fucking crazy. So, what do you guys think of Wham poisoning JoJo? Oh, yeah. Or, you, oh, you know, the, the, the ring thing, right? Yeah. 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 So, so this kind of goes into something else I was talking about earlier as well. I'll just go ahead and give Roddy up to speed what we're talking about. Is, uh, is, it, is it Wham or just Wamu? I can't pronounce that, but it is... <laughs> it, it's supposed I think to be spelled... the, the, ba- the band Wham. Okay, I'll just call him Wham then. But, um, yeah, he... um. He ends up fighting Joseph like right when the three pillar men awake and everything. The 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 last three anyway, and uh, well, he fights Caesar first, I think, and then Joseph. And Joseph ends up doing his patented like last strategy thing and just running away, which ended up saving Speedwagon and uh, Caesar because he jumped in a mine cart to try to get away by like faking, faking death like and moving a few feet and then laying back down before Wham saw him and everything, and then. End up getting in the getting a mine cart and like speeding away and stuff to lead him away from his allies, and ended up um, like Wham could have just killed him right there, like at the end of this that whole spiel and everything. But he ends up tricking him into um, saying, "Is like, hey, it's since I'm I'm the first one to ever actually hit your face and everything, and like because because Wham's a very very uh, honorable fighter. Yeah, ends up tricking him into be, being or saying like, hey, in thirty days you give me thirty days to train, I'll give you like the best fight of your life." One that may even kill you and everything, and he 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 takes him up on the offer pretty much, but he puts the this poison thing on his artery that like in thirty days it'll actually dissolve and kill him unless he can get the antidote off of uh, Wan's lip ring, and then uh, one of the other guys, I think it was ACDC, ends up uh, doing something similar on his windpipe, so then they have both of those. So that's what he's talking about here. Yeah, I, that that was pretty funny, actually, I, I thought, when ACDC comes up and he's just like, oh, so you're doing that? I want to do the same thing. I was like, oh, yeah, I want in on that yeah, action. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I thought it was a good way for him, like, to, to answer your question, Clicker. I thought it was a good way for him to pretty much guarantee, he's like, you will be fighting me then, or you're just going to die anyway. Right. Yeah, it was just interesting how he actually did give him the 30 days, and he believes him where he's like, yeah, I can... I'll I'll actually take you up on your offer here and actually let you uh, train for 30 days. Like, it shows just how honorable of a person that uh, Wham was and everything, which gave me a lot of respect for him where, because he's such, like, the honorable fighter, 
like archetype like it, it it was pretty cool right yeah i think he was the forish villain in this series where we actually started kind of caring for him a little more because deal was just as we talked about before just a crazy psychopath that no one could really like and then santana didn't really have enough of personality for us to to care or get involved a lot with him but Wem was the one where i was started like getting interested on a little more and actually kind of trying to understand his side of the the story a little bit what do you guys think of caesar um, i thought he was a pretty cool character as well i like how he ends up developing and uh with like a bond and everything with joseph and stuff and they end up becoming close because they when they first met they were like fucking hated each other right they were just complete dicks to each other like crazy like it was it was yeah it was bad <laughs> i really enjoyed how joseph just had a pigeon in his mouth and was just like pigeon attack to caesar oh yeah oh, the first, yeah. it was the first so funny because caesar was like all like just beating the crap out of jojo and jojo was just like pigeon I, well, yeah, that's I one watched. of the things. That's one of the things that keeps reinforcing that that Joseph is like he's a he he's a fucking cunning motherfucker. He's a trickster. <laughs> yeah, like he's he's crazy. And then uh, he also has he's... the stupid bubble attack. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, he's just bubble attack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I don't know how he sees that. Like if it that that's gonna be effective, I I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, I also don't know how I feel about that. I thought like it actually looked pretty dumb. It, it reminded me of SpongeBob, how they're not, <laughs> <laughs> how they're always like <laughs> with the bubble things. Anyway, but he seems strong. I don't know. He he did have a fair fight with JoJo. Like he actually beat him up in the beginning. JoJo just had like kind of a card under his under his sleeve in the end. Well, he does the thing he always does, which is even if it seems like he's losing, he's really not. He's just finding a right. way to win otherwise. Because, like, the thing that actually happens there is, uh, like, Caesar, like, kind of, like, pseudo possesses this woman to attack Jojo. And then he ends up doing the same thing with a pigeon, putting it in her mouth. And after he gets his ass, like, kicked, like, in quotes and everything, um, whenever, because Caesar did it by, like, kissing the girl and all that. When he goes to kiss her, then the pigeon pops out of her, or, of her mouth and, like, attacks him and everything. And it was it was pretty great because they they end up saying like Caesar said like you couldn't beat this woman then like JoJo said like you couldn't beat one of these birds like before that battle started and stuff it was it was pretty great it gave them like a lot it seemed like it gave them a lot of mutual respect after that yep yeah Joseph is not only extremely cunning but he's also extremely charismatic because a recurring theme is every fight he would just sit there and predict what the enemy was gonna do next and usually he was right which was okay. amazing as far as the prediction goes the whole like recurring segment where he says and then you're gonna say x and the person says x and then like stares in the air like oh shit he figured it out or whatever uh i i'm not sure how i feel about that because oh, i fucking loved it i mean it was funny it was cool and stuff but like if someone told you like exactly what you're about to say, you probably not say it then, right? If I'm like, oh, no, CJ, that's, that's the whole thing. He's, he's they're they're essentially he says it when they're in the middle of saying that almost like because he's doing it to the point to show just how many steps ahead they are and just how much he understands what they're thinking, what they're gonna say, and everything to the point where he can say what they're gonna say beforehand. Because they're like they're usually super pissed off, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna say this thing and all that, and he said it like right as they're about to say it just to prove to them how much like in their head he is just to essentially crush their morale, which was fucking right, interesting right. as shit. It's like if, if you could actually pull that off and do that, it'd be to the point where someone wouldn't be able to stop what they're saying just because you said it and everything. Cause you'd be in the process of saying it anyway. Okay. Pretty much. I think it was a good way to explain it. Yeah. Yep. No, it was mm -hmm. like, I, I, I get that. It was just that like, me trying to imagine being in a situation where somebody fig like told me what I was about to say, I would probably just block it and not say it. And like just the fact they would go through and say like sometimes like full sentences after JoJo has already told them that they would say that. Uh, I don't know. It was just kind of weird to me, but like a little mm -hmm. unnatural, you know, because all the other elements of the show are very realistic. But <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Something's realistic yeah. about this? <laughs> no, no, I'm just... <laughs> The dude has fucking shoulders bigger <laughs> than my fucking tires on my car. 
Like, and the other dude attacks with bubbles. Also forgetting the fact that guys going into other guys and taking over bodies and all this crazy shit that happens. Yes, it's, it's normal. <laughs> I mean, if that's normal down in Brazil, then I don't ever want to fucking go there, Dan. <laughs> this, this what are you talking about? Terrifying. It's amazing. Uh, is everyone that fabulous down there, though? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you go to Rio... Actually, if you go to a Brazilian... <laughs> You know, fuck it. I'm 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 lying here. Brazil is almost like America these days. Everybody's a bees. I don't know, just playing their playstations at home and everything. Uh, I don't want I don't I don't want to get down with the segment of the of the show. But anyway, so I think we've covered pretty much everything. The only thing we haven't covered is after training. What happens after they train? Which is pretty much after they train. Since JoJo got poisoned, they decide to go chase the. Stone mask guys and try and pretty much cure Giorgio of his poison. Well, Actually, they, before they, that, they find ACDC in their training camp, and ACDC kills one of the, like one of the trainers over there, yeah. like the one that was supposed to fight against Jojo. Yeah, yeah, because um, Lisa Lisa has a stone that they want. And because of that, they're trying to, like, break in and get it. And, like, ACDC is the one who actually goes there and tries to get it. But he actually ends up fighting uh, JoJo. JoJo there yeah. and ends up actually losing and getting killed and stuff. And then JoJo takes the, the cure for the poison. Then what happens after that? Oh, yeah. Fucking the brain. That shit was weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fucking takes over the, the, like, his brain goes, like, into Suzy Q and takes her over. And, like, actually- mails off the stone and, like, she's fucking it's it's weird right Go before ahead. that the brain's just hanging in cj in, oh god i, I almost said back. cj's back <laughs> jojo's back and yeah, just I'm fine like, with oh. you, dude i'm fine with you comparing me to one of the jojos that's completely okay <laughs> <laughs> yep and he's just like oh i think my back is a little heavy <laughs> oh yeah he says a his shoulders huge, are huge like shit. alien brain in your in your back dude like yeah anyway and then after but that yeah. Yeah, they, they find where the last two guys are in that mansion in the Wait, snowy what? Alps, I think what? it is. No? I don't think we got there yet, Roberto. No. Okay. What the fuck, Roberto? <laughs> we we just got to the point where Stroheim, like Vars attacks Stroheim and everybody else in the Nazi base. Dude, I'm so Nazis... excited. I'm so excited to see what like is gonna happen with Stroheim now. I hope I hope he becomes like more important in the series. I don't I do have kind of a feeling that he's just gonna get killed. Like Dude, he's a fucking cyborg. It's great. Yep. I hope there's like he has like a whole cyborg body and shit because you see, I think you just see his hand, right? I and a little bit of his face yeah. where he has like a visor or something, dude. I, I want him to like just be fucking full on like, just what's a good way to put it? You'll get to see more of him. <laughs> I want to see just guns out of like everywhere and stuff you'll, like that. You'll get to see more of him. I'm I'll, so excited. I'll put it that way. Hope so. <laughs> All right. Anyway. So, Clicker, like you said, you had some questions and stuff. Well, we kind of addressed in most of them. I kind of wanted to ask your opinions about what you guys think of Joseph over Jonathan, which you guys kind of already answered. Um, I I don't know yet. I'll I'll need to see more of him first. You, yeah. I feel like you're on the edge of really liking Jos uh Joseph a lot, CJ, because you like how cunning and how how he just kind of like adds insult to injury to his yeah. <laughs> to his enemies. So I think you're on the cusp of liking him. It's just the fact that he's not as gentlemanly as Jonathan is. It's, it kind of reminds off. me, he, he kind of reminds you a little bit with his like insult to injury, stuff like that, and just being a super badass half the time to uh, some of the D&D characters I've had where I've done shit like that. Like, I'll be destroying someone and then just insult them like hell. And, oh, it's so great. I've actually gotten gotten situations before I've actually hurt uh, the enemy's morale where it actually caused them to have like minuses and stuff because of how bad I was destroying them and like taunting them all. It, <laughs> it was so good. I never played D and D, so I don't actually have any idea of how that works. But it sounds interesting. Well, it's it's great. Like if you do a, a super charismatic fighter dude who's just punching people in the face, but he's I mean it's it's really turns into Joseph, someone who's incredibly charismatic but really strong. <laughs> and he just talks down to them like in these in very unique ways where it's not like something they're used to. And it's it's fucking great. We yeah, I did that recently. We should yeah, probably play campaign. that together one day. Roberto created a character and I quote called the world famous pugilist Tommy Ray Hanley. And every time <laughs> you address you had to address him as such. 
Because if you did not, you were doing it wrong. This this sounds right. like a character I'm about to start playing in like a week or two with, uh, with or maybe like three weeks, I don't fucking know. But I'm about to start playing with some of the guys I do D&D with. We're going to be swapped to a different campaign. And I have a a character who's a warforged, but he was made to kind of resemble the dwarves that made him and everything. So he's kind of like a, a crossbreed between dwarves and warforged, which people don't know. Warforged are essentially robots that have a soul attached to them and mm-hmm. they they can function as people and all that kind of i mean obviously they're mechanical so they function differently but the thing is great about this guy is he is um he he refers to himself because of what type of warforged he is he's the only one like this so he refers to himself as the dwarf forged like dwarf forged right and it. um anybody who he talks to oh yeah actually does like his full full name and everything was which is uh Skavrik Hammerstout, the door forged. Like he makes everybody refer to him as that. And if somebody has never heard of him, which I think most of the people in the campaign won't have, he's gonna be extremely upset and insulted to, from like everyone. He's like, "Oh, I'm the legendary door forged, Skavrik Hammerstout." I was like, "Wait, you've never <laughs> heard of me? What? What have? What have you been doing with your life, peasant, and all that?" And just like fucking freaking out and stuff. It's gonna be great. Oh, I cannot wait for this. So it sounds like it's gonna be similar to your your character, Roberto. Yeah. That character was good. We ended that campaign, and then that character has made a reappearance in the campaign we're doing right now, which is hilariously awesome. Nice. Yeah, I've actually had a character die and turn into an NPC before, where he was a he was a gnome, and he lasted like half a session before he died. But I had just met one of our one of our party members, and um, he ended up calling me Pappy instead of my name. And ended up just fucking fucking around with him, kept calling him Pappy and stuff. When he died, he was like just fucking around. I was like, "No, Pappy!" and stuff. And everybody ended up calling Pappy after that. But the world was where like the dead just couldn't move on. So because he was a gnome, and they're like they play tricks on people all the time. He was a ghost that haunted us and would just fuck with us at random times. <laughs> We'd be like doing something, and he would just like just write something on the wall that's like stupid, and be like, "Oh god, what the fuck is that?" It's like, "God damn it, Pappy, shut up." And it was it was pretty great. So yeah. talking about JoJo, <laughs> yes, yes, enough about that. Uh, it's pseudo random, man. We can go right. on random cool. tangents. Cool, sure. As long as I like Joseph format. I like Joseph. You like better Joseph. Than you like Joseph over yeah. Jonathan. Why? I'm, I don't know. I just think he's like he's he's way funnier, and that actually makes me like a character more for most for most of the time. So I don't know. Like from the first, like I was sold on Joseph from the first episode. Like. When Straits just comes up to him, is like, I don't know, kind of giving like hints that he wants to fight or whatever, and then he just like gets up like the gun and just shoots him like a million times. I was like, I, I like that guy already at that point. So <laughs> you like someone who would just attempt to murder someone, yep. even <laughs> like just assuming he's the right guy. Yeah, pretty much, exactly. So Roberto? I'm Soto Joseph already. All right, Roberto, who do you like better? Well, it's obvious, Joseph. What about you, Clucker? I personally like Joseph, and this might be because I've seen everything so far, So, but I personally love Joseph. Jonathan will always have, like, the the manlier role, I guess, because he's such a gentleman, but I just love Joseph's style of fighting, how cunning he is. Like, I saw some cunningness of Jonathan at the very end of the first arc, where he used the sword to like war- like he used the fire to warm up the sword against Steel's ice. And I think that, that was, was nothing compared to to what Joseph has been doing. Or... E- exactly, exactly. That's my point. I saw a little bit of it from Jonathan, but not enough. And then Joseph was just like, "I'm the best cunningest person around," and I was just like, "All right, Joseph, hands down, you you got me sold." I don't know, that, that may end up making me like him more. I'll just, I'll just have to see. So. We'll see. <sighs> Alright, so, any other things we want to discuss with uh, episodes 10 through 18 of JoJo's? Nope, we covered That's pretty much everything. Me. Doesn't seem like quite as much discussion about it as we have before, more just filling everybody in on what it is, but right now we're kind of at a point where there's a lot of shit that's going to happen, I'm assuming, and I'm assuming next week's going to be a hell of a lot better for this, like, just talking about it, so. Right. Yeah. Well, you guys will have to see. Dude, we we, we have a fucking, 
cyborg Nazi. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a lot of balls, too. So I, I'm assuming he's going to make everything amazing. So, All right. So I guess we're moving on to the next segment then, which is uh, other anime and manga stuff that we've been watching or reading. And I'll go ahead because mine's short and sweet. I got Majora's Mask 3D, so I haven't done any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been playing the shit out of that. So cool. Yeah, that's it. That's, it. that's a very that's a valid excuse. God damn! I like actually, this. I actually watched a lot of stuff. I watched all the Oscar movies. I'm not sure if those are anime. <laughs> I wouldn't count those as anime, Dan. Yeah, 3D doesn't it count. Is, it is. It is a type of entertainment, <laughs> but I don't know if I'd count that as uh, anime, Dan. But that's but yeah, okay. that, that's about it. I I had a busy week as well, and just like traveling and getting a broken car and having to fix it and all that kind of stuff. But Roberto is always watching stuff, right? Yep. Just my usual weeklies. I haven't really dived into anything new. So I'm probably was the busiest one this week. I caught up on all the manga that I was fought, fell behind on. So I'm fully caught up with One Piece. And again, <laughs> God, ah, uh, I can't wait till the next chapter. Ah, uh, spoiler alert for everyone. If you don't want to listen to this, stop now. But Roberto, because I know you have read this plan E, what do you think? Uh, you're going to cut some stuff up. I, so I have a theory. Plan E just means cut everything. E for everything. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it would be ah uh, no it it usually when stuff like this happens it's very badass and we have we haven't seen Zoro go full out we saw like a like a move of his which was like the three hundred and sixty pound phoenix right it was more than that this time was it was it it was like a thousand or something. Uh, oh, was it, uh, 1080? It was probably 1080. Um, so, anyways, yeah. It's, we only saw that move, and even that was powerful, but it seems like he's actually legitimately about to do something that, like, is about to blow our minds, and I'm super excited for that. So I'm like, super excited to read the next chapter, which comes out tomorrow. It actually usually would come out today, but they changed it. Anyways, beyond that, I caught up on Fairy Tale. As I don't know if anyone has read Fairy Tale here besides Roberto, but God, so much stuff. All of the stuff that happened in that, like in those like ten chapters, I missed. Um, I told you. Yeah, stuff you was going to go down. You did tell me stuff was going to go down, and in fact, it did. Um. I feel like the fights were, besides the Erza fights, a lot of the fights were kind of short. I don't. I hope the anime might extend them a bit, but a lot of those fights I just felt were short, like very, very short. Um, maybe that's just me, but um, we'll see what happens. Uh, a lot of stuff was revealed. Um, we finally kind of know what Lumen Historia is, kind, sort of. Kind of? Sorry. I don't know. It's we we can all assume that it's going to be something with the first um the, f- the founder of Fairy Tale. So, um yeah, there's just a ton of ton of stuff that happened. They kind of just restarted a year gap which I don't know. I I I guess it's okay, but I'm interested to see where they go from here cuz of the big reveal which was N stands for ethereal natsu dragon eel which believes tons of questions like what does that mean natsu was a was a demon all along like what 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 so it'll be interesting to see what goes on because gray also promised his dad he would destroy end and if end is natsu that will be extremely interesting to see if how that goes down um it's cl- is Klecker speaking Greek by any chance? <laughs> nope. I'm speaking okay. perfect English. Just making English. sure. Good. Okay. You might be um, going a little out of context. 
Am no, I? no, that's fine. No, that's fine, actually. Uh, I just wanted to joke around because I was quiet for a long time, but... Oh, I was like, there's an app- a little lonely over there, Dan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have CJ, though. CJ is um, with me on this. So, yeah, those are kind of what I got caught up on, and I was super excited about them. Still super excited about them. Nope. Yeah. Next segment. CJ, go. Uh, Sorry, I was reading something. Anyway, yeah. Uh, there was actually something I did find that I forgot that I read, because this was like, I, I had to wait for my, my new 3DS to charge at one point, so I decided to read something I've been thinking about for a while, or not for a while, I kind of just found, because I randomly search for manga sometimes, but, um, just, uh, what's the best way to put this? Don't just judge it based off of the name, like you guys always fucking do, <laughs> but it's, um, it's called Aero Manga Sensei. Oh my god. <laughs> and... What it is, it's actually pretty pretty interesting so far, because um, I've read a couple chapters of it and everything, or I think actually I'll put what they have, because I think I have five translated so far, and it's um it's about this guy who, I think it, I think him and his sister are both like either middle or high schoolers, I think they're high schoolers, but he hasn't seen his, or actually it's his stepsister, he hasn't seen her in like a year, because she's always locked in, his, in her room and never comes out or anything, but um... This guy's actually a uh, manga author, manga author, and um, he has like something that's semi popular and stuff. But the art's really good because he actually has someone else do the art for him, which is uh, Arrow Manga Sensei is their pen name, pretty much. Oh, and, okay. Um, like I'm so just gonna spoil it because why you is know where this get... is going? Why is Arrow Manga bad? Don't Erotic? Understand. No, I just, I just. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh God, oh, Becker okay. was Any... lost the whole time. <laughs> anyway, I, um... I didn't understand. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it because you, you guys should read it anyway, even knowing what's gonna happen with this, because you can see it coming. Is um, Arrow Manga Sensei actually ends up being his uh, stepsister, and she's actually the one who does all of the super like perverted drawings and everything for him for his manga stuff. And ends up being pretty damn funny. I think it's only like chapter two or three they reveal that anyway. Right. And uh, it seems like it's going to be pretty good so far. I've been enjoying it so far. Wait, isn't this from like the person who wrote Oremo? Oh, it does have a similar art style. Maybe? Let me check. Oh, shit. Wait, so you said stepsister? I'm going to stay away from it that. It is a stepsister <laughs> and not a real sister, though. So yeah. you don't have to worry about the bullshit of fucking... The, the right. OVAs of Aramo season two, because for anyone who doesn't know, I fucking hate those OVAs. They ruin the entire show for me. And the entire show was awesome, right? Just, like it was really good. Yes, then, the entire show was fantastic, unless you watch that last OVA. Do not watch that, and you will enjoy the shit out of the show. It's fucking just, great. Just pretend it doesn't exist. Yes, just it, no, it does not exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, just it <laughs> does not exist. Let me let me look this up real fast, so. And I spelled that wrong. Cool. Uh, where the fuck is it? So the Oscar is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to fill up space, CJ. That's how podcast works. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And talk about anime and or manga. Yeah, okay. Dan. What the so, fuck? I thought you were better that, than this. There was actually an anime movie recommended for like best animated movie or whatever, but I didn't watch that one. I just watched the like the ones that were nominated for best picture. You Most of them which, weren't that really that good. You know which yeah. animated film it was? I think it was called Tale of the Princess Kaguya or something like that. Now that you say that, I did watch something this week. I did, I watched that movie. I watched oh. the that was the newest Ghibli movie. The Tale of Princess Kaguya, which is based on an old folk tale about a princess who was found inside of a piece of bamboo, and she is raised by this poor farmer. And I think I saw a good. trailer. Oh, oh God! You're you're right, Roberto. I knew it. I I don't know how I feel about this now. Well, just keep reading it, and then he, he started you know this the... right after he was done with Aremo. Right. Whenever the last chapter comes don't out, do just it. don't read the last chapter. I, I don't know. <laughs> I've liked it so far because I mean, like I said, I, I fucking loved Aremo. It was great until that last bullshit that he threw in there that just fucking ruined everything. But um, right. I don't know. I've been enjoying it so far, so hopefully it'll keep being good and not turn into fucking just 
CISCON shit and piss me off. Which it, it it's still not going to be as bad because it's it's a stepsister, so it's a little bit different. Like I I don't typically have a problem with like them showing weird feelings toward each other and all that in the fucking manga or anime and stuff. It's not as bad because it's like okay, they're not actually related, Meh, whatever. But yeah. It, it's still I, I don't see how it could be near as bad as the fucking OVA of uh, Oremo, so I think I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, I guess we're moving on to the third section here of our podcast, which is the um, random topic of the day. Which this one is: What anime or manga had you hooked by the first episode or chapter? And I'm still looking mine up, so Dan gets to go first. Oh shit! Okay, put me on the spot here. Yes, I. I, am. I actually I thought a little bit about this before. I want to I want to talk about two shows because there's a major difference between the two. And the first one is uh, Tonari no Kabutsu Kan, or My Little Monster is the English name, mm-hmm. and that is a romantic show where, like, I, the first episode just had me, as you said, hooked from the beginning because. And I, I didn't want to spoil this much because I want I want people to watch this show if you haven't yet. But a lot happens in the first episode. Like, well, with most other romantic shows, you gotta wait like a long time till interesting stuff actually starts happening, and there's like a bunch of fl- filler uh, episodes and stuff. Uh, this one actually went straight to the point in the first episode, and that's why right there I was already really interested. And then the rest of the show was. It was good. I don't think it was as good as the beginning. It was still good, but overall, I had good feelings for the show, and I, I really enjoyed watching it uh, for the whole thing. It's only like twelve episodes long, I think. Hopefully, they'll have a new season one day because there's still like unfinished uh, business in there. But the other example that I wanted to give was a show called Codebreaker, which I watched while it was being released. H- have any of you guys watched that? No. Okay, so I think it's based on a very successful manga series, actually. Wait, um, what was it? I didn't quite hear it. Code Breaker? Oh, no, I have not. Okay, so this I one... Heard, I've heard of it, but go on. Right, I wanted to mention this one just because I thought, like, the first episode was really good. It really got me interested. Uh, and it's basically, like, it's narrated from a girl's perspective, and she finds out about this guy with fire powers, and the opening is, like, very... It feels like... like I just felt like the whole show felt like something that I would have watched as a kid in Cartoon Network or something, and because of that, I really liked it, and, like, from the beginning, it really grabbed me, but as I kept going, like, at every ep- at each episode, I liked the show less and less, until ultimately I thought it was, like, okay at best, but it, so I, I just wanted to say, like, uh, Tonai no Kabutsu kind of hooked me in the beginning, and I loved it, and then Code Breaker also hooked me in the beginning, but ultimately it fell short from what it promised in the first episodes and the story was just not as interesting as they as it looked like it would be in the beginning i don't really have like a lot more details into this because like Hmm. it didn't even like it didn't even resonate with me as much but there's basically like all those like this group of dudes that each have like a different superpower and this girl meets them like she meets one guy in the first episode and she sees him using his powers but he like he could not like he could not let let anyone see that he had powers. So the first episode ends with him like supposedly killing him killing her. So that that mm. was that's part of the reason why it was so surprising. And I'm spoiling the first episode in here, but in the second episode you find out that she wasn't actually killed, which makes sense because she was the main character and there's this whole story, but ultimately it wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Who wants to go next? I'll go, go next. Oh, Roberta, go ahead. For me, I'd have to say Black Lagoon. Oh boy, do I love me some Black Lagoon. <laughs> so if you don't know what it's about, it's about this guy named Rokudo Okajima. And he's like a tra- traditional Japanese businessman who actually is out in the South China Sea doing something for his company. When his boat gets attacked by a group of pirates known as the Lagoon Company. And they t- pretty much take him hostage because one of the members, Revy, thinks that He's worth more alive than dead, obviously. But he comes to find out that his company pretty much doesn't care and he's expendable. And he ends up joining the Lagoon Company. And they go on some pretty some pretty crazy adventures and meet a very colorful cast of psychopaths and all this fun stuff. 
It also has a very strong-willed woman in it. It has a lot of them in it. Yes. They're all crazy as fuck. <laughs> That's why Roberto likes the series. There's so a lot much. of swearing, a lot of a lot of blood. Wait, I thought Clacker was the one that liked crazy girls. I like crazy girls, yes. But Roberto likes the strong willed girls. If they're oh. crazy too, then we both just love them. Okay. So that's just how that works. That's yeah, like I like, I'll be interested in. I like the strong willed girls, I don't like crazy girls. I've had enough of those in real life. I I don't <laughs> like those anymore at all. Or well, I never did like them, I just fucking got unlucky. <laughs> Well, and it, just have something to have funny patience, that I found. CJ. I had patience. A fucking year and a half is plenty of patience. Never mind. Moving on. I don't <laughs> want to talk about that. Okay. So, mine has to be two series. Both are very similar to each other, but different in their own ways. One being Sword Art. Sword Art Online, the very first episode I saw, I was like, this is an amazing concept. I want to see more of this show. The second series, Log Horizon, same con- kind of the same concept, and I wanted more of the show. Um, I tend to, if I find out that I'm introduced into this new world, a world of possible, like, endless possibilities... I tend to want to know more of that world, and I tend to get sucked into it more. Um, there was one series that kind of grabbed my interest at, at a point, which was uh, one that just recently came out. It was, um, what was the ghoul? Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, at first, there was a lot of, there was an interesting concept to it, but my interest in it died down really quickly. Um, That's pretty it, much what happened to me with that series as well. Like, the first episode, I was like, dude, they could have so many cool things with, like, him trying to fight off his, like, ghoul side, and this could be really cool, and just, it slowly went downhill. So I I, I say Sword Art and Log Horizon because they continued that, like, interest for me, and I continue to watch them and like them ever more. So, that's what I'd say. I was so hyped for Tokyo Go in the beginning, and then like it just felt like it was going nowhere for the most part. I still haven't started watching the second season. Yeah, I haven't really watched the second season much at all either. Roberto probably has. I did. They're apparently doing whatever they want at this point. They're not following the manga. That oh. is a shame. Okay, I think they got me even less excited to watch it. Although <laughs> they could be making it better, I don't know. I doubt it. We all we all know that manga is always better than the actual anime. Like, I don't know about that. Very there's okay. So it's either they're the same quality, or the anime is a little less less quality. It all depends. So animes can shine a little bit more light on the feel of what was going on in that moment in the manga. So, a good example I know of is in One Piece. Recently, the anime did this thing called a King Punch, which in the manga you saw it and it was epic, but you didn't get the feel, the same feel as you did from the actual anime. Like, the anime made, like, almost like the air, like, you felt the air, like, being compressed into this punch, and it had a completely different feel, and it was awesome. And you didn't get that feel from the manga. And that's where, I guess, anime can kind of get a leg up on manga, but manga usually has a better kind of telling of the story, I guess. Hmm. Alright. Anyway, I think I'm finally ready for mine here. So I have three shows that are... I'll start with, like, the the last one's going to be the one that had me the most hooked. Even though it's not one of my all-time favorites, it is one that I still love to watch every now and then. And, um... So let's start off with the first one here. Uh, one of them that grabbed me pretty quick because um, when my buddy showed it to me and everything was, which is actually kind of funny because it was not the first episode of the series that I watched. It was actually the third episode of the series or the first episode I watched this series. And it was Kill a Kill. So somebody showed me the third episode, which, what exactly happened? I think that's the first time, like, you really find out what the, what the Kami actually are. And, well, 
I guess the best thing to say is if you haven't seen this sh- series, like shit goes fucking crazy and has some of the most over the top fight scenes I've ever seen. And immediately I was like, I need more of this in my life now. I need to watch this. <laughs> And immediately picked it up and started watching it after that. Went back and like watched the other two episodes and stuff. And it was it was great. Cause, well, yeah. It's done by the same people that did uh um help me out here, Alberto. Garen Logan. There we well, go. It's a different company, but a lot of the veterans from Gynex are Well, I, I, I haven't seen Garen Logan yet, and that's actually because I've heard that enough, that's something I probably will check out at one point. But um yeah. Just- just don't cry at the end of episode 10. Just don't do it. Just don't watch episode 10. Just don't do it. This You're actually made me watch... think, like, what CJ said about Kill a Kill rem- reminded me of Kids Exist because, like, I didn't use... Of course use it to... did, Dan. <laughs> it has everything to do with it, right? Uh... Uh, I didn't use to watch anime, and I was actually, like, in high school, I was actually that kind of guy who would look at the, like, the kids who watched anime and be like, oh, you're stupid, like, those are just cartoons oh, yeah, for kids like or whatever. Too. Yeah, and until like, and that this is actually a true story. I tend to tell everybody that my first like anime as an adult that I watched as an adult was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but which is kind of my favorite. But that's actually a lie because the real first one was Kids Exist. Uh, I was at my bedroom. Dead. Yeah, I was at at my bedroom in the night, and then my brother, <laughs> who by the time was probably like twelve or something, he called me <laughs> on his room and he was like, "So you say anime is for kids, right?" I was like, "Yeah." So look at this, and he just like randomly showed me like a fan service scene of I don't know like some uh, point in Kids Exist. I was like, shit, I gotta this watch that. This explains so much, Dan. <laughs> you explain so much. My God, shit, that looks amazing. And then I went back to my room and like <laughs> I'm sure you did, Dan. <laughs> I think we need to stop here. Yeah, no, let's, wait. Let's, let's cut him off here. It's not, it's not what you're thinking. It's not what you're thinking. And then I immediately looked for the first episode, and I watched the full series in one night. I mean, the full, like, the first 12 episodes, right? I didn't watch the OVAs, but that was after. Okay. okay. Yeah, so that's my story. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get back to what I was talking about so we don't <laughs> hear anything bad from Dan that Dan's going to regret. But, um... Yeah, I just looked up. I remembered why I loved this uh, this episode so much. This is the first one where um, Ryuko actually ends up getting to the point where um, she really actually becomes one with like the full power of the kami. I think, and um, like it ends up showing just what the potential is and how crazy shit can actually be. And uh, Ryuko ends up actually, um, well, just turning into a super badass there, and it's fucking great. And, like, the thing that was actually awesome as well is Mako the whole time is telling her to get naked and everything. And Ryuko didn't, like, really understand what she was talking about, but it more meant to, like, bond to the point where she was wearing, um, Jingetsu as her, like, uh, her, no, she had Sengetsu, I think. I don't remember. Sengetsu. Yeah. She was wearing it essentially as a second skin, and she would be naked at that point because it was technically part of her and everything. And Revelation, everything goes crazy. It's awesome. But, um... Yeah, that's that's why that one got me so hooked. It was just fucking awesome. And um yeah, what was the second one? The second one was um this one got me more and more just grabbed by the first episode and everything, which was Attack on Titan. Which oh, this yeah. one actually got me so grabbed to it to the point where whenever um I was caught up cuz whenever I started watching it there was only two or three episodes out. I watched those and then immediately over the course of the next, like, two days, read all of the manga all the way up to where it was. Like, Holy it got me shit. that hooked into it that I needed to know what was happening next and everything. Like, Damn. It's fucking crazy. That one did get me actually hooked. I actually completely forgot about it. But I was so sad by the end of the first episode. I was just yeah. like, you just killed me inside. Way to go, series. So much. Yeah, it, that, that was fucking brutal. Yep. Uh but yeah, that one just grabbed me. It's like I I need to know what happens next. Like that was the thing that drove me to read it so fast. Was like I have to find out what's in that goddamn basement and all that shit. And uh, <laughs> and then of course they didn't fucking tell you. But whatever. They yeah. will. They will eventually. Eventually. Maybe a few it's, years, but whatever. <laughs> it's gonna take some time. It's a yeah. month. Re- it's a month release manga, which is really yeah. slow. But at yeah. least like. At least the anime is actually waiting. It's yes. waiting, which I appreciate 
and it should more anime should do that. The only reason more don't is because of funding reasons, mm-hmm. and it's just that Attack on Titan is so huge that they like have all the funding they need to keep on working on it and stuff like that. So it's 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 I'm looking forward to it. They also have like an Attack on Titan like theme park. The Universal in Japan has an Attack on Titan like section now. Oh, nice. which is hilarious. oh yeah, I saw that. Actually, I did see that. It's it's actually kind of scary because they have like the huge giant faces and stuff, like the huge Titan faces and stuff. Yeah, it's like, kind of like super realistic wax dolls. So when you like see it, you're like, this looks extremely creepy. It yep. kind of hits the uncanny valley, but like. They did like an up close like image of what the wax dolls look like, and like they have veins popping out of their skin, and it's really high quality stuff. Um, so mm. it looks like it's uncanny val, like kind of uncanny valley-ish, but it looks kind of realistic at the same time. It's it's interesting. You know what the uncanny valley is, right? I know what the uncanny valley it's, is. I it's what you said kind of contradicts it's to the point where it looks so realistic it's creepy. Yes. You're saying it's like it's like uncanny valley, but it's realistic at the same time. It's like. That's that's why it gets into that clicker. <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Anyways. Know. Oh yeah, and um, the third one here. Just the whole the whole first episode just had me as like I need like it it had the most feeling of I needed to watch it like after that, but the first like thing that the fir- that the main character says like maybe a minute into this one grabbed me in and of itself because um this one's high school DxD. Ah, yes. First, first thing you Don't hear. Don't fucking from the talk main to character. me about Kizxes anymore, <laughs> CJ. Oh no, you I've been watching no anime for see. years at this point, Dan. Okay. And someone introduced me to this as well, so it's not like I just I tried to find the most perverted shit I could, and it's still nowhere right. near as bad as Kiss X just, so I don't want to hear goddamn things. <laughs> I but, don't um, even know what it is, and I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah, but High School DxD. First thing that the fucking main character says it's like man i really want to grab some boobs it's like <laughs> yes i like I it remember i'm sold that. yeah done. oh my god yeah done <laughs> and it Yo, was, that it was show fucking hilarious was really good like i actually really like like the first season of that show and i wasn't a big fan of the second one but the yeah. second one the end got extremely interesting and by the way they're releasing the third season coming, wait a moment like, oh, did you I'm watch so it Tucker? Excited. you just said that you did no oh, no okay. i i watched you make high Kiss school DxD. Oh, okay. I didn't watch makes... Kiss XX. Oh, okay. oh right. no, I I haven't touched that. I probably won't. Maybe I don't know. We'll see what happens. You'll enjoy it, Clicker. You should totally watch Kiss XX. I feel like that's actually a trap. read it instead. I sh- definitely feel like that's a trap. Oh, dude, it'll be fine. Don't worry. CJ. Anyway, moving like... on, so we can not have to talk about that. Okay, <laughs> so you should um, just you should just read it. <laughs> the high school DXD. I remember actually just finding it. Like what the anime site I was using, like had like monthly recommendations and it recommended mm-hmm. high school dxd and i didn't know what i was walking to when i first walked into it because i i think this is like the very first etchy i love the way I that watched. clacker has to like give a full explanation and an excuse for the reason why he watched it because <laughs> <laughs> happened to find it. yeah <laughs> somebody recommended it to me on the site thing that i go to all the time i mean it was just there so, yeah like, i had anyways. no idea <laughs> By, like, the third episode, I was in love with the series, and I'm super happy about the third season that's coming out yeah. this April, and everyone should be, too. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I'll, I'll watch it. Yep. Yeah, it's so good. I fucking loved the end of the second season. Which of you, all three, have you seen that? Yes. Remind me of it. Um, okay, heavy spoiler warning. This. this is the full fucking, like, last episode of season two of this, so you should just pause this for, or put it on mute for a minute if you don't want to yeah. hear this. Mute like, thing it I love until we tell you to unmute it and then you can unmute it. Even that though they won't hear it, you know. Whatever. Exactly. That's we'll have true. somewhere that says the timings for this, but anyway, the thing I love the most is uh, because he ends up fighting because he has a thing that doubles his power, right? And he fights the other dude who has power and stuff and like does the same thing, just like having like everybody else's power and absorbs it himself, I believe. And the thing that made me so happy was whenever you see him and he ends up doing his, uh, the, the, the bad guy ended up doing his ultimate move that starts having the universe. And the only thing Issei sitting there thinking about is like, oh god, the boobs. <laughs> Rios' his boobs will be half yeah. and everything. He goes down to like fucking uh, Koneko. He's like, that, it'll yeah. have whose boobs, if they're even smaller, will not exist at all. But all of a sudden just, a boobs, 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 boob
just fucking goes off the handle. It's amazing. That, that was like my hilarious. favorite yeah. fucking scene. Oh, <laughs> so good. Also, it becomes interesting because they're now it's not just Rias, it's also Rias and her like um her pretty much her right hand girl now also liking Issei. So it's now literally like this crazy love triangle. It's and not a triangle it, clicker. It's like an hexagon it, at this point, right? Like, yeah, I guess so. I, I, well, no, Kaneko, Kaneko hasn't K- gotten there Kaneko yet. has not gotten there yet. Yeah, but, but she's um, the only one, one. One thing, though. One thing I have heard from someone who's read some stuff. Apparently, maybe Kaneko gets in there a little bit, too. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I'm I mean, so excited for that. I love come Kaneko. On. You, you and your lolies. You and your lolies. Yeah. And she's got short hair. And she's a soon today. She she meets all the qualifications, man. Fine. How can I not like her? <laughs> uh anyway, enough about that. No more spoilers for that. But um I wanted to actually talk about why I loved the first episode here. So we'll, we'll bring it back around here. Boops. And um the reason that the first episode is great because first off it starts off, yeah, dude's like, I want to touch some boobs. It's fucking hilarious. And um then he ends up like him and his friends peep on some girls and he gets his all like they they like attack them and everything and like they the girls attack him and everything and then he ends up actually meeting uh Rias Grimmery who is the the girl that um essentially she's like the the main girl she's a leader of a group of devils and he's like shocked by the way she looks and everything and um then one thing is great he ends up actually because he wants to like have a girlfriend and everything so much to the point where he meets a girl randomly is just like hey I want to date you and everything does like typical confession stuff then they go on a date and everything and it seems all happy like stuff's great and um at this point you haven't seen like any of the devil or supernatural stuff so it's like okay cool this may just be you know uh, an etchy romance comedy thing or whatever and uh then she then the the um his girlfriend thing who is supposedly his girlfriend ends up fucking just stabbing him in the heart with like a fucking spear and turns into like this angel fallen angel thing and then Rhea shows up because he accidentally summons her and everything and she turns him into a devil and wakes up with her and him both naked in his bed at the end it's just like okay a lot just happened but I'm okay with it. I I need more of this because everything that happened was fucking hilarious or great in some way or another. Like it was fantastic. It, it was you, you didn't really see it too much in the first episode, I guess, but it it was definitely very unique. And like then the fucking main character ends up swearing that he's gonna become a fucking uh, a devil harem king and everything and all that. It's <laughs> fucking great. I fucking loved that show. It was awesome surprisingly the main character is actually very likable for how extremely perverted he is and yes. how openly perverted he is i don't know why but it, it he's, just is he's great yeah like another he... thing it, that shows how perverted he actually is he he ends up trying to get this little pet servant thing at one point they they go hunting for him and everything and he ends up finding this slime that's just a pest in like the the woods where they they pretty much are being led around by a fucking pokemon trainer guy but um like he finds a slime in the woods that all it does is seek out women and jump on them and dissolve their clothes off <laughs> and he was just like yes i want this one i love it oh, and everything. that's a weird episode but <laughs> just a random the episode best episode to show off how perfect he is is actually the ova where a scientist creates a plant that will literally oh. attack big breast girls and make yeah. breast plants and I suck the boobs I've out of them. Not that. just like attack them, but it'll like suck the boobs it'll like suck out of them. the boobs out of them. What he the literally decides that he's not going to destroy this beautiful <laughs> masterpiece and just let Rias get sucked dry. Yeah. And then Rias literally has to be like, "Well, if you do this, I'll give you this." And then he decides he'll actually save yeah. her. But it's it's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, anyone who hasn't watched that, that you you need to watch it. It's a fantastic anime. It is, do not expect something that's super mature and not stupid and etchy sometimes, but it has, it actually has a really good story and like characters and everything is, is pretty great. And you'll get, for like etchy fans and everything, you'll get all your typical etchy stuff in there. It actually has a lot of it in there and it has all the tropes and all that. So you'll see, you'll see plenty of half naked women and stuff too. So plus the it's, third season comes out soon. Oh, I'm so excited. 
that's just from what I've heard from my buddy about Kaneko and how she like acts around him because she starts to like him. Oh, I'm so excited! Oh, it's gonna make me so happy. I'm pretty sure, like, I'm pretty sure at the end of the series, all of them moved into his house, so hilarity's going to ensue. Yeah. (sighs) All right. Well. Anyway, I don't really have much more for this episode. I'm kind of out of stuff to talk about. (laughs) Wait, I do have something. Bakemonogatari. Bakemonogatari. Done. What? Oh, had to be done. We had not brought it up. No, 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 no. There's a new one coming out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we got something. There's the. Was it Kisei? No, that's not happening. (laughs) Kizu will happen eventually. Yeah, there we go. I really want it to. I'm. Oh, God, I want Kizu to happen so bad. Because I actually read that one. That's one of the only ones I actually read. And it's a fucking fantastic story. I thought. uh, Then what's the new one coming out? They haven't announced one yet. I thought they did. Didn't you post something about the new one coming out? It was that we're going to get an we're official North American something. release for the Ah, uh, okay. Oh, that's for the novels and everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, I am, I'm quite excited about that. It's nice that the novels are actually coming. Oh, yeah. So, I need to... I, I'm glad that I found a bookstore that actually carries some actual kind of rare manga. That I don't see too often. Nice. So I'm, I'm collecting slowly, collecting manga. I'm afraid to because I already have fucking six hundred dollars in a single anime. So that's just the the fucking discs too. So. Yep. Yeah, I got um. I actually just got in my what the fuck is the name of it? Koi Mono Yaten. No, that comes out next week. Oh. That's the I... one I was talking about. Yeah, that that comes out next week. I think the twenty fourth is when that releases. But um, I got the one that was right before that. I ordered the koi and the one right before that, like a week or two ago, and I finally got the other one in. I forgot, I forgot the name of it though. Damn. Oh, Tori. Maybe it's Shinobu time. Is whatever it is. Yeah, that's Shinobu. Oni. It's, it's Oni. Oni. Oh yeah, Oni. Yeah, it's Oni Monogatari. So yeah, I got that in. So I'm excited about that. And it's just like both sides are just like Shinobu. It's like yes, fucking love this. <laughs> And next week I'm getting Koi, so I'm I'm very excited about that. Hopefully I'll get it like the day it comes out, because I just want to have it. I think this, if I remember correctly, Koi is the one where the whole fucking Kaiki is best girl came from, too. Yep. Yeah, that's you see, one. that's when he does the head tilt and all that shit. And th- there's just a lot of him, a lot of character development with him in that arc. You finally actually get to, like, discover his true character and see that Kaiki. the... Yeah, Kaiki's like, just awesome. Yeah. Just in general. And that in that entire arc, like he's the the, the final arc of the first se- series, I was like, Kaiki, how do you do what you do? <laughs> I don't understand it, but I like you right now, so keep yeah. doing it. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's a good time to um wrap up here because we, we had to make sure we hit our episode quota for Monogatari series, so <laughs> now that we got that in there. Um yeah, uh shit, let me bring something up here. What is that? There it is. Sorry, I lost my script thing for a minute. See, we we actually are semi-prepared. I actually have stuff I'm supposed to say. Anyway, <laughs> closing. So, what we're going to be talking about next week, um, we're going to be doing the, the finishing of this season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which means episodes 19 through 26. I can't wait for so, that. Yeah. Fucking, I'm so pumped for fucking Cyborg Stroheim. So cool. <laughs> and, um, yeah, then after that, um, I think we already have our random topic of the day chosen, too, so give you a little little bit of teaser for that. Next week, we're going to be talking about um, most hated anime cliche or trope, and I still need to figure mine out, but I'm sure there will be many heated debates with that, so it'll, it'll be great. But um, I don't know. I don't know what my trope would be. What's the thing that as soon as you see it, you're just like, fuck that. Don't fucking do that shit. I think there, mine there may be some form of moe. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But uh, anyway, um, let's talk about where you can find everybody at. Um, yeah, so the the actual podcast itself, you can find it at... Um, I want to say this right. Is it pseudorandompodcast.wordpress.com, right? Yes. Uh, yes. All right. And also, if you search for us, because I know, actually do know we do have it on iTunes now. If you search for... Pseudo Random Podcast on iTunes. You can get that. We have a Twitter. What's the Twitter name, Dan? It's pseudo underscore pod, as in podcast. Yeah. So yeah. So 
yeah, subscribe to that so we can actually, or follow that so we can tweet out stuff about the podcast or whatever, talk about stuff. Um, I am known as Boom Coffee through pretty much all of the internet for Twitter and because even though I fucking never tweet, but um, yeah, that's my my Twitter, my my anime list. I'm Boom Coffee on there, so pretty much anywhere if you see Boom Coffee, that's most likely me. And if I if that isn't there, I'm probably not on that site. So um, yeah, I'll get everybody else too. If you want to go ahead, Dan, where they can find you and all that. Yep, just look at me at Lima Daniel Am on Twitter, and you'll see everything about me. So that's it. All right, and Roberto. RJR two nine nine two. And Clicker. Boclex, or you can find me on Twitter at Oclecker. Either one works, but Boclex will is where you'll find me. How do you find that Boclex, Clicker? That's how how do they spell that, just so they make sure they get that right. B O W K L E K E S. Alright. Cool. Literally so, Boflex, except replace the bo with the F with a K. Yeah. Alright. Awesome. Um so yeah, thanks everybody for listening and all that. It seems like we've gotten a little bit better, so yay for us and all that. Hopefully you enjoyed it and everything. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see you guys next week. Talked about uh, more JoJo's. Bye bye. Yep. Good day.